So good morning, everyone. I first came to this city 43 years ago with the Club of Rome. In 1973, the Club of Rome came here, of course at that time it was West Berlin, to receive the Peace Prize from the German Booksellers Association. And looking back on those uh, last 43 years, it doesn't seem to me that we're progressively getting more peace. So I was happy to get the assignment to speak this morning, summarizing 43 years in 20 minutes. Uh, why didn't we learn and will we? I was a professor for 50 years, and I came to understand that if one of my students didn't understand what I was saying, then that meant there was something wrong with him. <laughs> but if none of my students understood what I was saying, that meant there was something wrong with me. And I think it would be fruitful today to think, what should we do differently? So I changed the title just a little bit. Why didn't they learn from us and what should we do differently? Well, what is to learn? Uh, in 1972, the book Limits to Growth said, amongst other things, if present growth trends continue, et cetera, et cetera, we will reach the limits to growth on this planet within the next 100 years. And let me say, every research since then suggests that we are quite in the middle now of that process. Back in 1972, some leaders did learn. And let me tell you, incidentally, that all of these slides are available to you, so you shouldn't waste any time writing them down. Uh, both Andreas Huber and also Maxim have uh, postscript files of these slides. If you ask them, they just give it to you. So what did the leaders learn? Well, Siko Monsolt, of course, was involved in creating the European Union, and he said, we do not need growth. Without growth per capita, which means material consumption, we can better survive. Interesting to look at what the current head of the European Union is uh, saying. My first priority will be to put policies that create growth and jobs at the center of a policy agenda. The Secretary General of the UN back then said, we have maybe 10 years uh, to make big changes. Now, the UN has just promulgated a set of sustainable development goals in which they want to promote growth. Uh, even in the United States, notice I wrote this speech uh, before the election on Tuesday. Uh, Jimmy Carter said, uh, we have learned that more is not necessarily better, uh, et cetera. Obama, when trying to show what a good job he has done, boasted about how much economic growth he has generated uh, under his administration. So you can see that what initially was learned has been forgotten. And as a consequence, unfortunately, we're still on the same path that we projected back in 1972. This is the results of a study done recently down in Australia by the National uh, Scientific Research Council. They took two of our scenarios. The blue is uh, uh, so-called sustainable development. The green is our standard overshoot and collapse scenario. And the purple dots are historical data since 1970. And you can see that basically for most of the key variables, we're right on the path of overshoot and decline. But it could be different than that. And today in this meeting, we'll be talking about global warming, governance, uh, migration, making many excellent recommendations. And the question really comes in, how can we make those recommendations in a way that people will listen? 
I can imagine four ways. Address the right goals, focus on universal problems, provide correct information, and take personal responsibility. Let me summarize very, very quickly these. So first, address the right goals. We know that human needs uh, exist in a hierarchy. At the bottom, physical needs, shelter, food, water, air, then safety, loving and belonging, that's friendship, personal self-respect, and finally, mastery, personal mastery, music, uh, foreign languages, and so forth. Uh, I think the club has not been understanding what's really motivating most people. Donald Trump understood that, and if you compare the messages that he was giving compared with Clinton, he was talking to people that their physiological needs were threatened, and they need to build walls and keep out terrorists and so forth in order to secure these for themselves. Hillary was working up here, and she didn't connect uh, with the population. Next, focus on universal problems. I differentiate problems into two categories. Both affect everybody, but universal problems give you the chance for monotonic improvement. Imagine we're here now, we want to be there later, and we have two actions, one which takes us progressively in the right direction and one which takes us progressively in the opposite direction. And suppose the next election is here. Which one will the politician pick? Obviously, action one. And generally speaking, universal problems are pretty well taken care of by the current economic and political system. But the problems of interest to us are different. We're still here, and we still want to get there. But now the choice open to us is one action that makes things look better in the short term, but worse in the long term, and conversely. And now imagine the next election is here. Which one will the politician pick? This is the kind of problem we're making recommendations about. And this is the kind of problem where recently someone in the EU said, oh, we know what to do. We just don't know how to get elected after we do it. We have to provide correct information. The club has been based on a model that we start with people who don't understand, don't care, and aren't taking action, and we're going to give them scientific information, they will adapt, and then they will care, understand, and start taking effective action. It's not the way it works. You start with people who don't care, don't understand, and aren't doing anything. You have to change their culture. You have to make them care. Once they care, they're open to scientific information. And once they care and understand, if they're politically astute, they can start to take effective countermeasures. But if you only start by giving scientific information, you get yourself blocked. Here we have people who start, they don't care, they don't understand, and they aren't taking action. We give them a lot of scientific information. They still don't care. These are climate deniers. They actually fully understand that climate is changing. They just don't want to care about the long-term consequences. And when we put people into this block, now instead of adapting, they start to prevent. i give you an example. This is a list of the recommendations in Ronders and Moxton's uh, recent book, page uh, 108. Uh, excellent adaptive suggestions. Incidentally, uh, this would be a universal problem. You shorten it over the long term by shortening it also on the short term. This is going to be a global problem. People are going to feel worse off as a consequence of extending the retirement age until finally the economic benefits of that start to kick in. That's adaptation. This is what prevention looks like. Conduct public relations campaigns buy scientific and other expertise to create controversy, fund uh, political parties, hire lobbyists to influence the policy, use front groups to oppose in the control measures, uh, push for weak codes in order to preempt strong ones, uh, corrupt public officials. I mean, 
We see this going on in all of major modern societies. This is a cookbook recipe, whether you're trying to block tobacco legislation, climate legislation, uh, conservation of natural resource legislation, those who are against it will, who don't care, basically, they understand but don't care, this is what they do. And finally, if we really want people to listen, we have to take personal responsibility. I, in this case, would like to tell you the difference between what I call a proclamation and a resolution. A proclamation is where you stand up and tell everybody else what to do. If I may politely suggest so, basically the Club of Rome has been in the mode of proclamations. A resolution is where you stand up and tell everybody else what you're going to do. And to illustrate the difference, and as my last uh, message, I'd like to lead you through a very quick exercise. So put down your pens. In this exercise, my goal is that all of you will clap your hands once at exactly the same moment. And I'll make it very simple for you. I'm going to count to three slowly. One, two, three. Now, now don't do it. And then I will say clap. Precisely at that moment when I say clap, you all clap your hands. Okay? And if we're successful, outside they will just hear one single big noise. Here we go. One, two, three, <laughs> clap. When there is a conflict between what you say and what you do, what you do will convey a stronger message. Thank you. Thank you.